feeling he was gonna pass. Are you all right? I was sleeping. <laughs> that that's not cool, man. Oh, I'm sorry. The journey up here. Jesus. Really taking it out of me. Thought they killed him off for a second. Like Jesus Christ. Glad you're all right. Why wouldn't I be? I'm still fit as a fiddle. Burr, do you all feel that? Suddenly got a bit nippy up here. The wind blows. A gentle wind that once would have prophesied ruin. The wind howls. Oh, soothes me. Oh, what's that? Grab it! Hey, that's... Got caught in the leaves. Could have gone <laughs> straight through. It's Ma's letter from your scrapbook. Oh shit. The one that got blown off in the sandstorm. For it to end up all the way up here. Pa, we... We can put it back when we get home. Open it up when Ma comes back. Like you said. No, it's time. I've known for some time now. Hmm. Oh. Ah. <laughs> what? What's it say? She wanted me to take you, Zeke, and ride down to High Wind. What? What? If you're reading this letter, I bet my life on Sandrock and lost. I failed Akil. I failed Theo. I failed Sandrock. And worst of all, I failed you, Mort. We've lost too many good people, and now there are none left. But our story doesn't have to end like this. Take Zeke East. Find a new life. Survive. I haven't lost everything if I know that you've made it. I can rest easy knowing you're safe. So, please, don't throw your life away chasing this foolish woman's foolish dream. Let Sandrock go. Well, we didn't. You... You never opened it? Hmm. Would you have gone? If you'd known? I... would have. I came here a traveler, like everyone back then. I only stayed because of her. She inspired many of us. Her dream became our dream. And I loved her more than life itself. I would have done anything. I did when she disappeared. I couldn't believe it. Why would I? She spent months in that desert every year. I believe she would return, so... No, I did not read the letter. You carried the torch for her, Trudy, without question, and nearly met the same fate. Oh. Hey. Ma's spirit was stronger than her body could ever be. She gave us hope when there was none. Her memory kept us all alive. Kept us fighting. There was only one thing she loved more than Sandrock. It was you and me, Pa. picking up. Come on, Mort. Let's get you down the mountain before you catch a cold. If it's alright, 
I'd like to stay a little longer. I've got him. You all go on ahead. All right. Maybe better give him some space. Don't stay up here too long, all right? Look at us. A couple of old fools. Pretty good. For a couple of fools. Her dream. It came true after all. All because of one stubborn, stubborn old man. Was Martel's spirit who sent Mort the letter just now? Snack! It's nice knowing that someone like Martel's up there watching over us. The things are not always as they seem. That's a lesson we learn time and time again in Sandrock. In my book, both Mort and Martel are both heroes, more than ever. Everyone will want to know the truth, but... For now, let's just give them some peace. Good. Now, let's all get back to our greener sandrock. Yeah. Yep. Mountain Rose. Hmm. Well, those are still there, so it looks like I still need to put some more statues in. Hmm. We'll let the days pass and see if there's anything else going on. Looks like they are growing. That's nice. That's very nice. Baby's doing good. Yeah, let me take care of him. So small. Wow, you're standing on top of the baby. <laughs> Don't do that. <clears throat> Looks like the uh, rose bushes are done from Trudy. Something uh, tomorrow at the town hall. For his monthly little dig in. Right, I'm gonna start collecting this. I need to change. What is it? I would change my skill. Alright, harvest. Harvest. There we go. So those don't take too much time to grow. Which is good. Okay. There we go. Yeah, boy. Oh, and now they're gone, though. That <laughs> should have done. Fine. I guess I don't have to make any more statues. I guess I could always sell it or something. Talked about yesterday. 
See what's going on in the silver core. Oh, he's still in there. Damn. I've been in contact <clears throat> with the Alliance Council, and I just can't in good faith recommend anything other than the full extent of the law. Transfer to the Atara Maximum Security Prison. You betrayed us and have shown no sign of remorse. I will contact the authorities and organize the transport. I accept all punishments, truly, and will abide accordingly. Then I will keep you informed of the date of your departure. I just can't understand it. Why? It's no excuse, but I did what I believed was right. But this town, everyone living here, after all you did for us, everything you said in your sermons, you kept us safe, your guidance. I even trusted you to teach my daughter. I thought you cared. I truly do. Please, don't give me that. No. I was not used. I was betrayed. My actions were my own, and I am no one's puppet. I will face all the consequences with dignity. Well, thank you for your cooperation. You said that the water was a cover for their true intentions. I have been taken for a fool. This I realize now more than ever. I truly thought Duvos wanted the same thing as me. They were on the right side of history. But their actions do not correlate to the proclamations they gave me. Recently, I have been grasping at something, anything, that would validate my actions since I have been in Sandrock. The more I searched, the more I came to only one truth. There was nothing. My handlers were simply telling me what they wanted me to believe. I must have been simply a diversion. If I could have pushed everyone out of Sandrock, then Duvos could excavate the ruins in secrecy. My arrest threw a proverbial wrench into the works, and it appears to have pushed their hand. I was then left to rot. They never cared about me. They never cared about my ideals. Was a fool. When I was of age, I left to study in Mady. My family were believers in the light, and I dreamed of spreading the word. I always feared the day of calamity. I feared the light being extinguished once more. I quickly befriended Matilda. She was older than me, working as a tutor in the guided study sessions. I remember when I first met her when I attended her session the first time. She was helping a group of students with their questions on faith. She was kind, understanding. Whenever I disagreed with the doctrine of the church, she listened. Later, I started to feel that the teachings were not enough. The Church of the Light has an unwavering trust in people above all else. It's the individual people that got the human race through the Age of Darkness. This is why you see Sandrock being somewhat loose in the Age of Corruption technology. I am somewhat more pessimistic about human nature. Allowing humans freedom to pursue their vanities is what led to the Day of Calamity. Those around me in the Church did not take the teaching seriously. Even the Deacon. It was as if they had forgotten the sins of our forefathers. During my studies, I became depressed. I drifted further from the teachings, became isolated, and found myself more radical. Then, an agent from Duvos made contact. The things they told me, the 
do us would regulate technology. Everything I heard aligned with my beliefs. They wanted structure. They wanted to ensure no one else ever lost their lives. They wanted to ensure the safety of humanity. I see now in retrospect, Matilda used my grief against me. She was conditioning me. She must have told an agent of my wavering faith and guided their hand from the background. While I was studying in Lady, my town was destroyed. I'm from Dos. I'm a child of the lost city. Our existence was always a delicate balance. Being a town skirting the border of the peripheries, we were aware of the dangers, but largely went unbothered. As I went to study in Lady, I bid my hometown farewell, though kept in regular contact. It may surprise you that I took part in many of the onboarding activities and was a strong advocate for the church school. It seems strange to reflect on that now. During my studies, Doss was attacked by a creature from the peripheries. It happened overnight, without warning. Everyone in town was killed. My parents. My brother. You cannot imagine it. My entire town destroyed by a monster in the blink of an eye. Just thinking about what my people went through. When the news was announced at school, I felt everyone's eyes on me. They were fixed, filled with an empty pity. I fell into a trance, simply glided through the halls, unable to process what had happened. I needed to talk. Confronted. Where were the Rangers or the Civil Corps? How did we not see it coming? How? How could the Alliance let this happen? The questions burned into my mind. I sought answers, but people avoided me, said I was too intense. Within a week, people were laughing again, enjoying. They'd all forgotten already. Countless lives lost, yet they returned to their lives again as if nothing had happened. Everyone simply avoided me further, except for Matilda. She was. I fell into the darkness. I sunk into the questions that were burning on my tongue. How could the Alliance let this happen? How are we allowing the sins of our forefathers leave us in ruin? How could the free city simply abandon us? I expected a rescue. I expected the rangers to search and destroy that monster from the peripheries, but... No. They saw it as a lost cause and moved on. My family were not even buried. They were left there for the wilds to consume. It was then that my heart was blackened to the Alliance, that my thoughts started to drift. I was vulnerable. I was lost. I was found by Matilda and led astray. She would encourage me to think independently, to question myself. She said my fears were valid and that I was a fiercely independent thinker. And while she did not agree with me, she valued my beliefs. I now believe she was taking note of my doubts, and behind closed doors crafting a narrative that reciprocated my beliefs. A narrative she then passed on to handlers. It was no mere coincidence that I was sold a beautiful vision of Dolores. I should have seen this sooner, but I was blinded by their words. It answered all of my questions. So, all that I took for Dufo's ideals were simply my own being reflected back to me. In that light, what I have done to Sandrock is unforgivable. It is only now that the blinds have been pulled back. I must face my actions head on. I 
still believe that we as a species need to control our desires to pursue unfettered technology. Loss must not happen again. However, that does not excuse what I did. I have wronged the people of this town and the free cities. I must accept penance for my actions. I must take this as a time for personal growth. Thank you for coming to see me on this time. It's been uh it's been a while. I think it's been in the prison for like over a year. <laughs> I think there's something else I need to check out. Oh yeah, definitely more. Uh, all right. Oh yeah, Pablo. I don't think I've ever been in Pablo's store. Darling, you're here. I knew you'd remember. I've already finished designs for two collections. Oh, yeah. I'll give you a sneak preview. Why that takes so long? <laughs> I designed two sets of clothing, some formal wear and swimwear. I've made more than 10 sets for each design. The scene, a rapidly changing sand rock, blooming flowers, celebrations all around. The people, still dressed in their boring clothes. We need some aesthetics. We lack diversity. We need a breath of new, fashionable air. I never thought this day would come, but I finally think the time is right. I am going to put these on the catwalk. A fashion show. Yes, a fashion show. As I was drawing them, I could picture it. The lights, the gasping faces, the stunning designs, and me at the back, needling the final touches on a hypnotizing piece. It will be a two-day affair, each day focusing on one series. This was... I am hesitant to admit, in fact, Trudy's idea. She was more than supportive and believed one day to simply be too short. Now, what else is needed? First of all, clothing production. Okay. I know about the design. <clears throat> I do not possess the skill to create these magnificent pieces. Ha! I can see your expression. No, I do not need you to make them. Oh, thank God. I've already asked Vivi. <clears throat> she has agreed to work with me. Now, the issue of the venue. Oh. Trudy believes that the show could bring in tourists and offered to host it outside the city hall. But the construction of the stage will be your piece de resistance. Alrighty then. With Trudy's support, honestly, this has grown bigger than I could have imagined. I even have my models, and they love the designs. Heidi's already made a diagram for you. You just need to make it and give it to me. That's not a problem, right? You're quite the go-getter, aren't you? It's positively charming. Well, I just have to prepare the clothes, organize the order of the show, then, when you have built the stage, please give it to me. Believe me, Sandrock will soon be the cosmopolitan hub of the free cities. Sweet. So that's one thing I can work on. <clears throat> and then there's another down here. I truly believe you should look there's the builder come join us Mia needs your help well you know how I've been helping out at the moisture farm but with the greenification of Sandrock almost complete I'm going to have more free time so I was thinking maybe it's time for me to start something of my own I want to settle down in Sandrock just like you have mm -hmm. but I'm still not sure what that something should be Mian told me to follow my dreams and do what my heart desires. You know, I've always had a passion for tending to various plants in the garden since I was a kid. So... A business, huh? Like a shop, perhaps? But what should I sell? Potted plants? Gardening tools? That's perfect! And you could also sell flowers! Why does she walk away like that? You know, I've always wanted to be a shop owner, too. When I was a kid, I used to dream of opening a bakery or a florist shop. Funny how life turned out. I became a builder like the rest of my family. While I might not be skilled at growing plants, I love having them to decorate my house. 
I'm sure there are more people like me in Sandrock, and we don't have a store catering to that yet. So I think that's a brilliant idea. I see. Selling flowers makes sense. It's easier than dealing with just gardening tools, which I have to import and find storage space for. But with flowers, I can grow them myself. Perhaps Zeke would even let me use a plot in his moisture farm. But how can I afford to rent a shop? I know I could ask my family for support as a last resort, but I'd prefer to figure it out on my own. Really? Really, really? You're yeah, only 5,000 goals. <laughs> I'll happily accept it, but don't fret. I'll pay you back once the profits roll in. Now, let's think about the location. The main street doesn't have much space for a new shop. And if we set up too far from the town center, it might be inconvenient for people, especially if they want to buy those heavy gardening tools. I have a balcony in front of my workshop that's currently free to use, but it's not big enough for a whole shop. What if we just set up a flower display rack there? Ah, a display rack with a canopy. That sounds about right. It'll look lovely on my balcony and provide some extra shopping space. By the way, I still have some extra funds left after donating to the Sandrock School, so I thought you could have it. You know, it's like an investment. Thank you, but what the Builder has offered is more than enough. But it's just that I'd really love to be a part of this. I mean, I told you I dreamed of opening a shop when I was a kid, and I wasn't joking. I just never got the chance. That's why I want to invest in the business. I thought you could use some extra goals to order different flowers from other places and attract more customers. And I could help you with whatever you need help with. I just, I kind of wish to run the business with you. Is that a possibility? Ah, oh, I see. Of course. I'd love to be business partners with you, Mian. It would be really? Oops. Thank you so much, Nia. Just tell me what you need me to do. While I may not be an expert in planting, I'll try my best. I'll even ask Zeke to teach me some techniques. That's all right. We'll figure out the planting part together. First, let's come up with a name for our business. Even if it's just a few racks, it's our special place. Any ideas? Hmm. I thought so too. I want the name to represent both of us in some way. Hmm, but Nian, 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 they don't sound very catchy. <laughs> How about we put your name first? We could call it Mi Mini, because it's small and cute. Plus, people will immediately know it belongs to you and me. That's brilliant, I love it. How about Mini Botanica? It reflects that we sell not only flowers, but also plants and everything related to gardening. It's settled then. Let's name it Mini Botanica. We have a name and a location. Now I need to prepare some flowers for sale. Oh, that would be so special. You two grew up together, and now you're literally helping Nia build her business. I'll help with growing the flowers. I'm not an expert, but I'll do whatever Nia asks me to do. Don't worry, you'll get the hang of it in no time. Okay, I'll design a recipe for the display rack. And I'll ask around and see what people want to buy from our shop and then get the flower seeds. Sounds like a plan. Thanks for your help. We'll send you what you need tomorrow. Goodbye, see you soon. Oh, you. Yeah, just to say, like, I think Nia kind of ran off. <laughs> It's like, where, who, who the hell are we talking to? <laughs> her voice was there, but her body wasn't. Let's see. Okay, so waiting for the letter for the me mini botanica. Uh, windproof cloth, and he makes six of those. <clears throat> and poplar wood board. 
six of those. All right.